What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video which is on Can Frank Lampard's Chelsea achieve Champions League football and get into those top four positions in the Premier League? Mm. And there are several talking points which will dictate on whether Chelsea can achieve this feat this season and we are going to get into all of those in this video. But before we do get into the video, I do want to request that you you do subscribe to this YouTube channel. Hit that bell notifications icon because I upload every single day. Don't want you guys to miss out. And you know what? Why don't you like this video, please, to help me out? Right then, Chelsea, top four. Can they do it? Pre-season, I had Chelsea finishing about seventh. Now, that wasn't me being negative or overly pessimistic. That was me being realistic. And I'll get into why I thought that and why many others think that still. But as Chelsea have gone about their business in pre-season and their opening three uh, performances in the Premier League and in the Super Cup, it has me thinking. My concerns that I had in before pre-season have kind of dissipated a little bit and I'm thinking maybe there's a chance. But there's a load of factors to consider. But generally, people still have Chelsea finishing 6th or even lower than that. And you know what? You could forgive people for having these predictions because think about it. Chelsea had lost Eden Hazard in the summer and he contributed to 49% of Chelsea's league goals last season. 49%! And obviously they've got a transfer ban so they can't look to dip into the market and replace those goals with some elite forward. Furthermore, Chelsea came into this season with a bunch of injuries. And you know what? Arguably their four most important players were injured. Callum Hudson-Odoi, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, N'Golo Kante, and Antonio Rudiger. So that's bad. And finally, Super Frankie Lampard, club legend, great coach by all accounts and certainly could evolve into something special but he's still a manager with one year's managerial experience and that comes from England's second tier the championship so you mix all those factors in together and on paper people can look at that and you could forgive them for saying yep yeah, they're gonna take some time they're gonna need to you know bolster that squad etc and just gain experience from top to bottom therefore yeah they could finish six or lower and also you got to take into consideration while this is happening at Chelsea the surrounding teams are bolstering their squads and you know ma their managers are more experienced in the Premier League now and they're splashing the cash essentially so the website odds checker which is a platform that consolidates different betting companies odds for top four and then they sort of give you an average They've got Chelsea to be favourites finishing 6th. And then, interestingly, they've got Manchester United 5th, uh, Arsenal 4th and Tottenham 3rd. Now that's all kind of predictable. Personally, I might have had Manchester United and Arsenal the other way around. But maybe because Arsenal's spent so much money with Pepe and they did get defenders and midfielders in the transfer window. And probably Unai Emery's a better coach than Solskjaer, well he has to be, just purely down to his experience, that I guess maybe Arsenal would be above United. But United have bought Harry Maguire and wan Bissaka, and really their defence was the issue. And United's back five now is pretty darn good if you include David De Gea and all the back four. And Arsenal's is still not good. So I guess you could flip between either Arsenal or United, but I still probably would shade United in, the, in fourth place maybe. Actually, I don't know. Anyway, but Arsenal do have undeniable firepower. I mean, they did before they bought Pepe and then they bought Pepe who does look immense and he will be immense. I know Danny Sabayas wasn't as good in his second game than he was in his first game but he's a player as well so they've got a lot of creativity, a lot of firepower and if they can score a lot of goals and just you know really beat down on the smaller teams they could maybe get into that top four without too much problems. But it is a difficult one to call and before pre-season I actually had Leicester challenging the top six in my predictions and perhaps that hasn't changed. If I look at Leicester's squad and how they want to play I can see them beating a Man United or Arsenal and doing better for our league campaign so yeah so where does all of this leave Chelsea Football Club well I never had particularly high ambitions for Chelsea I was intrigued and excited by the appointment of Frank Lampard and what that would bring to the club and indeed it does look like he's bringing positive attributes like expression youth academy players and forward thinking on the pitch and generally I think I'm feeling a little bit more positive now the beginning of the season hasn't been amazing from Chelsea 
but the problems have been tactical defensive problems, kind of stuff that I feel like can be coached out of the team. And when you've got a coach like Frank Lampard who's not going to be stubborn with an ideology and he'll look to fix a problem if, however way is necessary with his you know, coaching team, I feel like Chelsea can fix those problems. And look at Chelsea's squad. I know there's a transfer ban, but after the loan recalls and the promotion of certain youth players etc, Chelsea's squad's pretty darn good. I mean Chelsea's midfield, for my money, is the second best in the Premier League's only behind maybe Manchester City, but think about it, right? You've got Barkley, who's a really decent, serviceable number 10. Um, you've got Mason Mount, who looks like an excellent, young, creative uh, and threatening player. And Golo Kante speaks for himself. Jorginho, an incredibly highly rated specialist player who looks like he's getting better. You've got Kovacic, who looks like a superb player, who, again, who's developing his game and he's superb, a superb ball progressor and defensive midfielder. And of course, you've got Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who is looking like an absolute worldy last season in that midfield. So yeah, you would struggle to think of stronger midfields in the Premier League than what Chelsea have to offer. And then there's Chelsea's defence. Now, Chelsea have four very good centre-backs that all can develop and get better. Um, they have a left back in Emerson who's in scintillating form uh, from pre-season up into the present. Azpilicueta has been better at right back defensively and he's getting assists putting crosses in but when Reese James comes back in or rather is introduced to the team that back five including Kepa is pretty darn good. Chelsea have talented wingers slash inside forwards as well. Obviously they've got Christian Pulisic and the soon to return Callum Hudson-Odoi, both very young, exciting and talented wingers with the backup and rotation of the older boys, Willian and Pedro. They're not four bad options to have. And when it comes to scoring goals, yeah, that was a worry, but if Tammy keeps up his confidence after his brace on the weekend and he keeps getting helped out by people like Mason Mount behind him and the wingers maybe, you know, Chelsea might be okay scoring goals eventually. My biggest concern for Chelsea Football Club was Eden Hazard leaving and how are this team gonna create chances because he was the difference maker under Sarri. Sarri's idealistic systemic football when it didn't work, it relied on Hazard, or sometimes Loftus-Cheek actually, picking up the ball and doing something creative and direct. Obviously that's gone, but you know what? After watching Frank Lampard's Chelsea, that, co that concern has dissipated because Chelsea are creating chances all the time. They look like a very creative young team, always carving out chances for the forwards. And it looks like also that every single outfield uh, player has license to shoot. Chelsea are taking on much more shots than they were taking on last season. So they're creating just as many chances, if not more, and they're taking on way more shots. So if they're a little bit more clinical, they can score loads of goals. What was I even worried about? <laughs> so can Chelsea do it then? Can they make top four? Well, there's a few things to consider here. I mean, firstly, they're in the Champions League now, which is going to be a strenuous competition. It's obviously very, it's got high quality opposition, right? But just the fact how it's on Tuesday and Wednesday and not Thursday is actually huge. And bearing in mind, generally the Europa League played on Thursdays, you have to usually travel a lot further. So generally they're not going to the outskirts of Russia or Eastern Europe on a Thursday. Long, long travel, little rest, and then back on the Premier League a few days later, they've got more rest and they're playing more locally. And I think in terms of morale and positivity, it's easier to ride a good vibe when you're playing in the Champions League. So that's a big positive for Chelsea. And then there's the fact how Arsenal and Manchester United, though they spent big in the transfer window, neither of them are shoo-ins for the top four. Not like you think of Manchester City and Liverpool. Obviously, they're going to be in the top four this season. Like, you'd have to be crazy to suggest otherwise. But you look at Manchester United, you look at Arsenal, and they are riddled with problems as well, you know. So maybe, yes, they're probably shaded by the bookies to get into the top four over Chelsea, but Chelsea will always seem to do well in adversity or people don't believe they're going to do well. But neither of those are shoo-ins, and both of them, it wouldn't surprise you if one of them fell out of the top four at all. And then there's Tottenham. Pre-season, everyone's like, well, yeah, Tottenham are going to finish third. They're the third best team in England. They've got a great coach in Pochettino, which is true. They've bought an amazing player in, in Dombele, which is true. Uh, maybe they could have done with a couple more top tier signings, but they're, you know, Tottenham are the kind of team that when they don't sign someone, they seem to get better anyway. But everything doesn't seem sweet and rosy in North London at the moment. Spurs have looked unconvincing in the opening fixtures. Um, 
And I'm, I'm just mean when they lost to Newcastle 1-0. They haven't been at the top of their game. They've been quite pedestrian. Now, I don't know what's going on at Tottenham and if there's other problems that the media or the public haven't seen, but certainly there's the issue of Christian Eriksen. And also Pochettino leaving Vertonghen on the bench. He's been their best defender. Anyway, there's some stuff going on. When you're leaving your most creative and exciting player on the bench in Eriksen because he wants to leave, fair enough, I get he wants to make a point, but... If you can't replace him, he needs to play him because they can't be losing to Newcastle and suddenly get into a real bad stink. So as things stand and as things look, maybe Tottenham isn't a guaranteed third place like everyone's been saying. So that will be interesting to see if they have a few more bad results. Maybe the mood will change, get more flat away at the Tottenham Stadium and they could start sinking. This is football, this is Premier League, nothing is guaranteed. Remember, Leicester won the title. <laughs> But one thing that I'm pretty certain of, it will be Liverpool and City at the top of the Premier League by the end of the season. But there's two spots there, and again, there's four teams that want those two spots. Maybe even Leicester might come sniffing about, but to be honest, in my opinion, it's still all to play for. If Chelsea tighten up their defence, some of their tactical issues, Ruben Loftus-Cheek comes back, Callum Hudson-Odoi comes back, Chelsea have got a good squad, man, and people need to remember that. If Frank learns on the job a little bit more and they get better throughout the season, um, kind of in contrast to Maurizio Sarri getting worse throughout the season, then anything can happen. There's a massive feel-good factor at Chelsea, probably more than Arsenal, United and Spurs at the moment, just because of Frank Lampard, his staff and how his squad are reacting to him. And I think you can't really put a price on that. That's hugely important. So maybe? The bookies might have Chelsea favourite for sixth or lower, but you know what? That might be worth a few quid. Because Chelsea, as per usual, look like an unpredictable quantity and they could absolutely, in my opinion, get top four. Anyway guys, what do you think? Get down in the comments, let me know your thoughts. Do you think Chelsea can get top four this season? Do you think they could finish in that third spot? Or do you think they'll probably finish sixth or seventh? And that's okay because they're developing a new dynasty under Frank Lampard. Get down in the comments and let me know. Also, if you have enjoyed this video, guys, please do like the video. And why not subscribe to the channel if you are new? You can also follow yours truly on social media. If you want to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you can. And it's at... Football Yannick. That's it from me guys. I'm gonna keep moving. I hope you guys do enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me back.